Ted, and today we're going to be talking about World Chalice. Before we get into the video, Team 6K just got to 600 subscribers, meaning if every single one of you got 9 other people to subscribe, we would be at 6K subscribers. So go ahead and share with your friends that might be interested in this kind of content. Speaking of our content though, we've put up a poll to see what you guys would want to see next between World Chalice, Sulfur Chords, and Metal Foes. And for a while there, Sulfur Chords and World Chalice were battling it out, but in the end, World Chalice wins. But it's okay, my next video is going to be Sulfur Chords anyway. If you guys want to be involved in the next poll, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. So World Chalice, those of you who may have voted for World Chalice or wanted a World Chalice video to come at some point, might have felt like it wasn't going to come considering the skill nerf. For those of you who are unaware, the Labyrinth Builder skill was how the deck was played competitively for a bit, and I'm not going to lie, that is the best the deck has ever been. It is a lot better than the version of the deck I covered in a previous World Chalice video. Those World Chalice videos were kind of you know doing what we could with what we had but we got a lot more and a lot better link monsters so we could really take advantage of the world chalice a lot better but what that deck was trying to achieve is still possible all except for the spellbook package of course because what you could do with that skill is return two cards from your hand to the deck and put a labyrinth wall on the field and since it's a normal monster you can use it immediately to get into your world legacy combos without dedicating any main deck slots and without even dedicating your normal summon but we can't do that anymore because the labyrinth build Builder skill says you can't special summon the turn that you use it. But fear not, what that deck was aiming to do, we can still do. After looking online, I couldn't see anybody else who figured out how to play World Chalice after the nerf. So hopefully this video is going to be helpful in allowing people to still play World Chalice. So, essentially what the skill did, giving you that normal monster and allowing you to begin your plays, we're going to have to replace what that skill did in order to get our plays going still. So, we've dedicated 8 of our main deck slots to the World Chalice Normal Monsters, that being five of the actual World Chalice Normal Monsters themselves and an unexpected die to summon them from deck. We are hoping to have unexpected die so that we can get a normal monster on field without normal summoning it. However, if we don't have the unexpected die and we do have a normal monster and the World Chalice himself, then we're going to be good. But before we get that deeply into what kind of hands you want to see, this is supposed to be an advanced guide, so I'm going to tell you everything that you might need to know about this deck from the very beginning. So the World Chalice archetype is pretty much focused around using a normal monster as a starter to go into our Imduck the World Chalice Dragon, and why would we do that? It requires a normal monster, it's a link one, so you just use one, one normal monster, and it grants you an additional normal summon of World Chalice monsters. And also, if it leaves the field, you can special summon a World Chalice monster from your hand, and all of the link monsters do that, and the link monsters doing it is also not a once per turn. So general idea is we're going to get a normal monster on the field by normal summoning it, or by having an unexpected die, turn it into that M duck. And now that we have that bonus normal summon, we can tribute summon World Legacy World Chalice. And then once we tribute summon the World Legacy World Chalice, it'll allow us to trigger the Imduck Engrave to special summon a World Chalice monster from the hand. Then we'll have two monsters to link off into a Link 2, which will trigger off the effect of World Legacy World Chalice. This guy's got three really good effects, so I'm going to read them all. But at first, the most important one is the second effect, that if this face-up normal summoned or set card leaves the field, you can special summon two World Chalice monsters from your deck except for another copy of itself. So, we're trying to normal summon it instead of special summoning it by the floating effects of the link monsters because it itself is going to float into two monsters from the deck. So once we have this on the field and the monster that Imduck summoned from the hand, we could link them off into a link two. Then the World Legacy will chalice, will summon two monsters from the deck and we'll have a link two and two other monsters that we can turn into a firewall dragon. And this is going to be the main interruption of our deck. It's a link four that requires two or more monsters and only once while this card's on the field you can quick effect target a number of monsters on the field and or graveyard both players grave and both players field by the way up to the number of monsters co-linked to this card that means it points to the monster and the monster it points to also points to it and return them to the hand. So basically, we're trying to set this up with a monster that, that co-links to it so we can bounce a card from our opponent's field to interrupt their plays. It has another effect, but it's not relevant in this deck because we can't trigger it. But how exactly are we going to get a monster that the Firewall Dragon can point to? Well, we do have another extension piece in the deck, World Chalice Guard Dragon. This guy has two really good effects, but the main one we're talking about right now 
is if this card is in your graveyard, you banish it and then target a normal monster in your graveyard and special summon it in defense position to a zone that the link monster points to. So you might summon this to a zone that Firewall points to and then turn that normal monster into your second copy of Imduck and since Imduck points up and Firewall points down, they will be co-linked to each other. How exactly are we going to get that guard dragon in the grave? Well, of course, we could just summon it using the World Chalice. If we happen not to have this or this, we could also search for them using Lee the World Chalice Fairy. Because if this card is normal or special summon, you can add a World Chalice monster from deck to your hand. And this card also has a pretty nice recursion effect that could be pretty nice if you happen to have a guard dragon in your hand. That you can send a monster from your hand or field to the graveyard to add this card to your hand. So you could discard your guard dragon to add this back to your hand so you can use it again next turn. Giving you those beneficial pluses also putting the guard dragon in the grave so you can revive normal monsters. If you happen to have an unexpected die and a Lee the World Chalice Fairy as well, you could use the die to summon a normal monster, normal summon the Lee, to search for World Chalice, turn the normal monster into an Imduck, contribute that Lee to summon the World Chalice, then you know, go into the combo normally. World Chalice does happen to have other effects, technically we can take advantage of them, however it's not going to happen all the time. If any monster is special summoned from the extra deck, you can tribute this card, send that monster to the graveyard. So, you know, if you happen to have this on the field due to one of the floating effects of your World Chalice monsters and your opponent special summons from the extra deck, you could tribute this to send that extra deck monster to the graveyard so they don't get to get advantage of it. Regardless, this guy's going to be in the graveyard, and this guy also has a graveyard effect on the turn after it's sent to the graveyard. You can banish it from the grave to add a World Legacy card from deck to your hand. You know, World Legacy, World Chalice. You know, you might think, oh, this card searches the whole archetype the next turn. It only searches for another copy of itself. You could also use it to search for a World Legacy Guard Dragon Mar Dark, which can special summon itself by banishing a couple of normal monsters from graveyard, and then it'll make all of your opponents lose 500 attack and defense for each dragon you control. He himself is a dragon, so... You could also search for a World Legacy's Heart, which lets you target two World Chalice monsters in your grave with different names and add them to your hand. This even lets you shuffle back your Link monsters if you want. But you know, these are kind of bricky options. You can definitely go ahead and play them if you want. I'm not here to tell you how to build your deck, I'm just here to show you how to play it. The other amazing effect of World Chalice Guard Dragon, he's also really good in the hand, is that if your opponent targets your linked monster, that means it points to a monster or a monster points to it, then you can quick effect send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard, negate that activation if you do destroy it. So we set up the firewall right and then we have an Imduck pointing to it and if they want to target us we can negate it using our guard dragon hand trap effect. Technically you can go into any link 2 for the combo. You could even play a, a second copy of security dragon instead of Ib the world chalice priestess if you wanted. But we like having that floating effect of the Ib world chalice priestess. It has the same floating effect as Imduck that special summons a world chalice monster from the hand if it's sent to the grave. If a monster points to this card then it cannot be destroyed by battle card effects and it also cannot be destroyed by card effects. And if a monster it points to would be destroyed by card effect you can send this card to the grave instead. These effects aren't going to happen that often, however, it can be useful in certain situations. We have Security Dragon, you know, I mentioned it before, it requires any two monsters, so you could play two of this if you wanted. And then once while this card's on the field, if it happens to be co-links, which I explained earlier, you can target a monster your opponent controls and return it to the hand. Nightmare Unicorn requires two or more monsters with different names. Usually, people just use this for its on-link summon effect to discard a card, then shuffle any card into the deck. Technically, that is all we are using it for too. However, if it happens to be co-linked when you activate that effect, you can also draw a card. So what you could do is you could go into a link to put a normal monster under it, turn that normal monster into an Imduck so the Imduck and the Security Dragon are co-linked, bounce a card with Security Dragon, keep that Imduck there and use another monster and a Security Dragon to go into Nightmare Unicorn, shuffle a card, and then because the Imduck will be co-linked with the Nightmare Unicorn, you'll draw another card. Ningirsu is usually one that we're going to be going into if we can't go into Nightmare Unicorn, to be honest with you, because it requires two or more Link monsters, so you're going to be using a Link 2 and a Link 1. And if this card is Link Summons, draw cards equal to the number of World Chalice monsters this card points to. That effect, we're not going to be relying on it. You can use it, but we're not really going to be relying on it. The main effect here is that once per turn, you can send a card from each player's field to the graveyard. And that doesn't target and it doesn't destroy. Also, if you send itself, you'll also be able to get that beneficial World Chalice floating effect to summon a World Chalice monster from the hand. And then the last monster we have is Rasta Liger. This is basically Duel Link's version of Access Code Talker. 
It requires two or more monsters except tokens, 2000 attack, that'll be relevant in a second. You can target a link monster in either graveyard. This card gains attack equal to that target's attack until the end of this turn. So this is kind of what we're gonna be hoping to go in for if we're going second or if we're going in for a follow-up play. Because we could target a Nightmare Unicorn or a Firewall Dragon in the grave and this guy will suddenly be more than 4,000 attack. And you contribute any number of your monsters this card points to, destroy an equal number of cards in the field. It's not going to be that hard to get something to point to it because of that graveyard effect of World Child's Guard Dragon. It's also worth noting that that does not target, it just destroys. So as you can see, we got a lot of removal in this extra deck. This is going to be very easy for us to OTK if we happen to need to do that. And a lot of the disruption in the game happens to be things like Book of Moon and other things that will flip us face down, but Link Monsters can't be flipped face down. So that's what's so nice about having a deck with a Link Monster interruption as opposed to a Synchro Xyz or Fusion interruption. We also have the Forbidden Lance, of course. We don't really want to be hit by back row like Karma Cut, Book of Moon. You could also use Mystical Space Typhoon or Cosmic Cyclone if those are what you have. But I hope that you're familiar familiarize yourself with the effects because now we're about to get into the actual combo tutorials. If you're going first or when you're going second, there are a couple of different hands you're going to be looking for. The first of which is any form of normal monster and the World Legacy World Chalice and the other one is the Lee the World Chalice Fairy alongside an unexpected die. Of course we do play max copies of both of these, we play max copies of the unexpected die. The World Chalice Fairy and any other normal monster isn't really going to do the trick because we will have already used both normal summons before we can get that World Chalice out. So that's why specifically we need the unexpected die for the Lee the World Chalice Fairy and I'll show you that combo in a second. But you know the main combo here is using the World Legacy World Chalice and any form of normal monster, that being the die or the normal monsters themselves. Here we have the die and the World Chalice, so we're gonna activate that die. Might as well, you know what I mean. So summon whatever normal monster. It doesn't. It really does not matter which normal summons you play, as long as you got a good amount in your deck so you can see them often. We're going to link it off into an Imduck, the World Chalice Dragon. And then we're going to tribute summon the World Chalice by tributing that that Imduck. And we are going to rely here on the Imduck's floating effect to special summon the World Chalice monster from the hand. But I don't know if you noticed, every single card in the deck is a World Chalice card except for Die and Forbidden Lance. So we're going to special summon whatever other World Chalice we have from our hand. Turn those two into a link to. It doesn't really matter which link to you turn it into. So I'll turn it into Ib so we can save the security dragon for next turn. Then the world chalice is going to float from the graveyard to summon two from deck. And if you don't have a guard dragon in rotation yet, then get it. <laughs> you need it for the combo. You need to either already have it in the grave by some other means, or you need to get it. And if you haven't used Lee, then you might as well summon Lee to get that beneficial plus anyway. You know what I mean? So we're going to summon the Guard Dragon and the Lee. Lee is going to activate. And I will search here, because I can, for another Guard Dragon for its beneficial hand effect on my opponent's turn. So I'm going to link all three of these off into my Link 4 Firewall Dragon. Ib will ask us if we want to special summon the guard dragon from hand. We want to use that hand effect to negate our opponent's targeting, so we're going to say no to that. And now our graveyard is glowing, so we're going to activate it. But which one are we going to activate? The Lee or the guard dragon? So if we had another World Chalice monster in hand, we would send it to add the Lee back so that we can have it as a follow-up play. But because the only World Chalice in our hand is guard dragon, we want to use that hand trap effect, we're not going to use that Lee. So we're going to use that guard dragon. Revive whatever normal monster we want, it really does not matter. Turn it into our second copy of Imduck. And now, as you can see, these two arrows are glowing. It's because they're pointing to each other, it means they're co-linked. And now Firewall Dragon is glowing because we can bounce cards now. It's a quick effect, but it's also an ignition, so we could bounce cards from our own field or graveyard. We're usually going to be doing it to our opponent to interrupt them. Another th cool thing that could happen is if Imduck is destroyed on the opponent's turn and we happen to have a Lee in our hand, then it will float and the Lee will be summoned from the hand. We'll search whatever we need to search so we can follow up on the opponent's turn. And the other cool follow up thing that we already have in rotation is a World Legacy World Chalice. It will be able to search another copy of itself next turn so we can get that beneficial normal summon, link it off again, and get two more World Legacy monsters from the deck so we can go into whatever links we want to. So, we have a really strong follow-up play, we have really strong interruption, and we have really strong protection. 
but also we have the skill three effects you could use a different skill if you wanted you 100 percent could but i really like three effects because you can you know target your firewall with it and either make it indestructible by battle make it so you take no battle damage from attacks involving it or the one you're most likely going to activate increase your life points by firewall dragon's attack which is 2500 so the fact that we have 6500 life points is going to make it a lot harder to kill us especially with our protection and our interruption so like I said in the last combo tutorial, you either want to have a World Chalice and any normal monster, or a lead the World Chalice alongside specifically Unexpected Die here. We don't have the World Chalice, but we do have the Lee and the Unexpected Die, so we're just as good. So we're going to use the Unexpected Die, summon whatever normal monster from deck, it, it does not matter which one. And we can normal summon that Lee. Lee will search World Chalice. We can link our normal monster, whatever one it was, into an Imduck. And then we can use our World Chalice Tribute the Lee. And I'll, I'll tell you why we tribute the Lee in a second. Because if we tributed the Imduck, we would have the World Chalice and the Lee in our main monster zones. But then the Imduck would want to activate to summon from hand. And we want to actually use that Imduck. And sometimes it can be awkward, especially if the opponent interrupts you right. So just generally, I like to clear to keep my main monster zones clear whenever possible. It really isn't that deep. It's going to be the same result regardless. This is pretty much just how I like to do it. So we're going to link into a link two because we happen to be going second here. We're going to go into Security Dragon using the World Chalice and the Imduck, going into that Security Dragon. So our zone placement is going to be somewhat important. We kind of want a normal monster to be in the Security Dragon zone. Um, so we're going to activate that uh, World Chalice, going to activate the Imduck, and the uh, the Imduck is going to summon a normal monster to the zone that the Security Dragon points to, and then that'll allow the uh, World Legacy World Chalice to summon whatever we want from the deck. So I'm just going to summon uh, these two, because the other ones we haven't used yet. And the reason we want this one to be a normal monster is so that we can turn that normal monster into our second copy of Imduck. The reason we want to go into our Imduck is because it points up to the Security Dragon that points down. It allows us to be co-linked. So I could use Security Dragon to bounce his monster. So let's just pretend I'm bouncing his monster here, okay? Just pretend I bounce his monster and that he happens to have another monster on the field. Then we can go into the next thing, which is the Nightmare Unicorn. Using that Security Dragon and making sure not to use that Imduck. Just use any other monster. So I'm going to go for the Guard Dragon here. Summon it here again so that it is co-linked to that uh, World Chalice Guard Dragon. So, going to discard a card, shuffle their card, and draw a card. It's, it's great, we're gonna be able to draw a card. You know, if we happen to need a Guard Dragon in Grave for some reason, we couldn't summon a Guard Dragon. That's generally not gonna happen, but, you know, let's say, hypothetically, we couldn't get a Guard Dragon in the Grave. We could discard the Guard Dragon using the Unicorn, draw a card, very nice also digs into our lances which you know <laughs> fantastic you know what i mean and then from here what you could do is you could go into firewall dragon if you feel like you can't win yet you know by using the normal monster and the unicorn and then you'll already be co-linked with the imduck the other thing you could do is you could go into a rasta lugger using the uh, the normal monster and the unicorn something in here rasta lugger already points to a monster if they have another card i could tribute that monster destroy their card and of course, Rustle Liger can target a monster, a Link monster in the grave, gain its attack, and, you know, that'll be just an easy GG's. And, you know, you might as well flex on the opponent with a 3 effects skill to uh, gain 4,200 life points. Or 45 if there's a Firewall in, in there. So, the majority of the time, you really are going to either have World Chalice and any other normal monster, or Lee with an unexpected die. The majority of the time, those are the hands you're going to be getting. The vast majority, really. It's going to be difficult to get a hand without one of those combinations, considering the entire deck is built around it. However, now and then, you're not going to have one of those combinations. In that situation, all it means is you're just not going to be able to get that floating effect of the World Chalice. You might still be able to, you know, link off and do stuff, but that floating effect of the World Chalice is really what is important in this deck's card advantage. The World Chalice is basically like, I haven't counted it specifically, but it, it, 
to be honest, it's like a plus three at minimum. It m might even be a plus five over the course of the game. And if you can't use that, then you're really not getting a whole lot off. But, you know, in a situation that you cannot normal summon it, sometimes you can still search for it with Lee and then special summon it later using the floating effects of one of your Link monsters. And that's actually perfectly fine, because that itself is also an interruption you can do. Sometimes it, all you need is to interrupt the opponent so you can get a gas follow-up play. Sometimes, though, you're not even going to be able to do that, you know. But at the same time, you can look at every deck in the game and say, Oh, well, what if you don't draw this combo? What if you don't draw this combo? This deck, as you can see, is very consistent. Of course, just like every other deck, it will brick. And maybe other decks' bricks are a little bit less backbreaking. But at the end of the day, every deck does have a bricky hand. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't play a deck just because you can brick now and then. The majority of the time, you won't brick. The benefit of the old version of the deck is not only that you pretty much couldn't brick. I mean, you could brick, but you pretty much couldn't brick. But also the fact that that normal monster was just guaranteed 100% of the time. And the other great thing about that is the opponent can't respond to it because it's a skill. So you get your normal summon on the field, they can't interrupt that and then you can go right into the imduck without any hassles but you know we don't have that anymore so it's not productive to look into the past and say oh man if only if only we live in the present and we move forward with what we've got and what we've got really ain't bad I, like it does everything the deck used to do except for the spellbook package part it's still really consistent and the three effects gaining us a bunch of life points is going to make it very hard for the opponent to kill us if they can break our board so of course the deck isn't what it was but it is still what it is. Go ahead and build the deck differently if you want to. Like I said, I'm not here to tell you how to build the deck, I'm just here to show you how to play it. But let's just get into the gameplay, shall we? So, I'm gonna be, you know, voicing over because my audio got corrupted, but, you know, going against Zexel here, you know what I mean? I'm gonna use the best case scenario hand of Unexpected Die, summoning a normal monster from deck, tributing, go into Imduck, tribute summon, you know, uh, summon the uh, the Lee from hand really best case scenario hand this is like the best hand I've ever seen in my life that is gonna go ahead and search for the uh, guard dragon which can negate you know the the targeting right go into a link to this was during the time that I had two security dragon in my extra deck you could definitely go ahead and do the same thing as well if you wanted be yeah, gonna float into two monsters get that other guard dragon in the graveyard of course you know what I mean keep the one in hand um, you know, then we can use all four of them to go into a Firewall Dragon. So we're going to go into our Firewall Dragon. going to use that Guard Dragon in the grave right away to resummon a normal monster. Turn that normal monster into an Indux so I got that uh, co-link going on. And I use the three effects, gain 2500 life. Discard the normal monster to add back Lee, because another cool thing is, you know, the opponent destroys Imduck, then we can summon Lee from hand, search for a follow-up play. It's, it's amazing. So. This is literally like the best case scenario. Uh, the only thing we don't have is a lance. Um, so the opponent summons a normal monster. They happen to have Monster Reborn. Really nice. They're going to resummon our level 4. Um, if you don't want the opponent to do that, then you can just play more copies of the level 3 normal monster if you like. But it's really not that deep. Um, he's going to go into his giant hand. Giant hand is usually a really good counter to Firewall Dragon. Because if I want to bounce him, he can chain to negate me and he can just go throughout his plays. Um, however, I'm going to activate that firewall anyway. He's going to giant hand to negate me. I'm going to use guard dragon to negate that and destroy it. And he will, you know, destroy me. I'll summon the Lee from hand. Lee will search and he's going to scoop it up. So I'm going first this time with an unexpected die and a Lee. So that is the full combo. Going against Blue Eyes here, very cool. Uh, going to normal summon that Lee, search for Well Chalice, turn the normal monster into Induck, tribute summon, then go for a link two. I was still playing the you know two security dragons at this time period. Um, going to float and float again. Having <laughs> man, it's going to be such a full field. Making sure, by the way, to put the normal monster into the uh, the zone that you want to turn it into an Induck, right? So we can co-link to our firewall dragon that will be in this zone if you wanted to like flip and make it into this column instead that's completely fine i just like this column for some reason um so i'm going to turn it into a firewall turn my normal monster into a uh m duck as well gain that 2500 life points set that lance you know they're going to be going off they are going to sage their own sage because they think that our back row is important um, 
you're going to be trying to banish it, uh, I, I don't care, might as well use it, you know, against his Dragon Spirit or White. Maybe he tags out, you know, maybe he is a, ta a tagging Andy, but, you know, here we go. He doesn't tag out, he's a bit smarter than that. He uses Cards of Consonance, he sets a back row, I bounce him, hoping to, like, bait him out, maybe he has another Blue Eyes in hand. He's going to summon another Blue Eyes in the end phase, but Blue Eyes doesn't have an effect. The Spirit Dragon does, you know, so I'm trying, that's the one I really want to play it out. Um, but yeah, I'm going to top deck a Lee, great, but regardless, the World Chalice is going to search another World Chalice, so I contribute some of it, you know, and with it, whatever World Chalice I happen to draw, I can tribute the M Duck, summon whatever, whatever World Chalice I happen to draw, and go in for a whole other combo again. So I'm going to tribute summon here. And then uh, I will float. He's going to use Karma Cut, targeting Firewall Dragon. He thinks Firewall Dragon means something. I've already used it. <laughs> but if he got rid of the World Chalice instead, then the World Chalice would still use its floating effect because it just leaves the field, you know, by any means, and it'll float. If it was normal summon, that is, which it was. So if he Karma Cut it this, then I still would have gotten my floating effect. Regardless, I would have been one monster down. And uh, the Karma Cut is pretty much worthless here. Um, the most worthless Karma Cut you ever seen in your life. That Lee's gonna search a Gar Dragon. Hell yeah. Gonna normal summon it. Link them all into Nightmare Unicorn. Not even discarding a card, that's okay. I'm just trying to float here at this point. Gonna go into a Rasta Liger. Rasta Liger is going to become 42. And I'm gonna tribute my normal monster, destroy his blue eyes. I'm going to use Guard Dragon to revive a normal monster, and it just attack the game. Very easy GG's. So I'm going second here against Synchrons. It's not the best Synchron deck in the world, but you know, um, if you want to see the best Synchron deck in the world, we actually got a video on that, so be sure to check that out. Um, but you know, he's just going to be doing his standard stuff. He's only going to be able to summon Stardust Dragon here. He doesn't seem to have any back row in hand or anything like that. So just the Stardust Dragon. But it is a prismatic Stardust Dragon. Props to him, alright? He clearly cares about his Stardust Dragon nearly as much as I do. So I'm going to use the Unexpected Die. I also have the Imp, so I'm going to go into that Imp Duck. I'm mainly showing this video just to showcase the going second capabilities of this deck, so... Yeah. I'm not going to be destroying any cards for the Stardust ne Dragon to negate. I'm just going to be bouncing it using a Security Dragon. Well, Chalice and the Duck are all they're all going to float. All of these floating. Going second is arguably better for this deck because you're going to have more monsters in your hand to float into. So yeah, going to bounce their card. Going to go into a Nightmare Unicorn to shuffle their other card and also draw a card right here. Then go into a Rasta Liga. Rastalaga can uh, become 42. I can gain 42 life points and attack the game. It isn't what it was, but like I said, it is what it is, and what it is is pretty good. We are still going into Firewall to interrupt them. We're still going into Security Dragon, into Nightmare Unicorn, into Rastalaga to break their entire field and go for game easily. We're still following up super consistently due to that grave effect of the World Chalice. And you know, as time goes on, the deck might change again. And the version of the deck as it is now might be similar to the version that it was just before, but it is completely unrecognizable to the original version of World Chalice on this channel. And more cards could come out that would make it unrecognizable to the current version of World Chalice. And that's perfectly fine. This deck is just so adaptable depending on what link monsters we have on the game. Because of the fact that it doesn't lock you out of anything, and because of that floating effect of World Chalice being just so damn good. But yeah, let me know how you guys feel about World Chalice in the comments. If you have any questions about how the deck operates, or in general about the deck, be sure to leave them in the comments and I'll talk to you about it. Like the video if you like the video, subscribe if you're new, and hit that bell to get notified whenever we upload something new. And I've been Undead from Team 6K, signing out. Why they gotta hate on me? I done got me a quarter million views and they still saying they low key. They ain't wanna come work with the kid, but I'm flexing with Zay on beats. How they ask for a spot at the gym, but they leave all the weight on me. I don't ask them to wait on me. They would ask where they gonna be. With a song if they wanted the weatherman, I ain't asking to pay no fees. She was homeless and needed a spot. I ain't asking to pay no lease. I ain't asking to say no please. I ain't asking to make no cheese. Scream fake, but it ain't on me. 
Got clean so it ain't no streets. Why green if it ain't no keeps? Brought cream so it ain't no beef. My team say it ain't no chief. My demon they hang on me. They seemingly ain't no peace. I seen him, he ain't no beast.